Good morning everyone and welcome to our morning daily Lent Bible readings. Uh, this morning we're going to read from John chapter 4 verses 1 to 42. This is a well-known story from the Gospel of John. It's about the Samaritan woman at the well. Let's read this together. Jesus knew the Pharisees that heard that he was baptising and making more disciples than John. Although Jesus himself didn't baptise them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily, wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised. For Jesus refused, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew. I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you are greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink from the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come out here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a woman, husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while the Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worshipped? Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshippers worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah, is, so the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask. What do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone, Come and see the man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants and another's harvests, and it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others have already done the work. Now you will get to gather the harvest. 
Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him for ourselves, heard him for ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the saviour of the world. Amen. It's a, an interesting story and an incredible story on so many different levels. Jesus broke with um, the tradition of the day. He spoke to somebody who was a Samaritan, whenever he is a Jew, and the Jews did not like the Samaritans. They basically called them half-breeds because it was Jewish people who had married non-Jewish people and then had children, uh, and that's how they got the title Samaritan. Um, he also, Jesus also broke convention because he was a man sitting on his own at a well talking to a woman who was on her own. Something again that they just didn't do in those days. Jesus didn't care about convention. Jesus didn't care about man-made rules and regulations and man-made hate. He wanted everyone to understand who he was and for everyone to understand the life-changing event that was going to happen whenever he would die on the cross. He wanted everyone to realise that he was the Messiah. And it's really interesting whenever you see Jesus in verse 26 tell her, I am the Messiah. The I am is in capitals. Um, and it can be entitled as I am is here or I am the Lord. And the Greek reads, I am the one speaking to you. Um, and it refers back to whenever Moses asked, who will I say has sent me? And God said, I am who I am. So Jesus very clearly was declaring that he is the Messiah, that he is God's, and that he has come to take, do the will of his Father. And whenever he says, those who must worship me in spirit and in truth, it's, worship is not simply a set of do this, do this, do that. Like Simon said, follow, follow the leader and this is worship. Worship is something which must come from inside of us. Something which must be felt, which must be true, not hollow and empty. That's why we often say the church is not the building, the church is the people. And we worship God in everything that we do and how we pray and how we sing and how we read his word and how we... Um, explain his word and preach from it. Just how we draw in in reverence um, and we draw in with respect into his presence. God wants us to, to really understand who he is and to accept him and to let him come in and change our lives so that we do have that well bubbling up inside us. Jesus, you know, it, it's interesting that it's, First time we read in John's Gospel, he's doing this in Mass. It's not to a group of Jews, but to a group of outcasts and outsiders, to those who are unloved by the Jews. You know, Jesus sets the bar very high for us that way, that we should be reaching out to those who are seen as the outcasts or the unloved, the people who are pushed to one side. And we should be caring for those who at times seem unloved, and showing them true love. How can we show true love today? Let's pray. Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you for just how it speaks to us, how it shows us, how it teaches us, how it challenges us. And Lord, there's nothing more challenging than, than reading about the life of your son, Jesus, and how he lived and what he did and then how we are to, to mirror his life and to live in a similar way. Lord, show us today someone who we can love and care for. Someone who's on the outskirts of society. Somebody who's been pushed to one side. And may we show them your love so that they may know it and be transformed to it by it. Father, thank you. In Christ's name we pray.
Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Um, take care the rest of the day and enjoy the bit of sunshine that there is out there. And may you know God's peace and blessing. And I'll see you again tomorrow morning at about half nine. Till then, take care. God bless.